Hi guys, my name is Julie Holton. I'm the principal strategist at M Connections. We're a marketing agency based here in Lansing. Um, prior to working at M Connections, I spent um, more than 12 years working in TV news. So I actually started and ended my career at WLNS. Um, so I so I have a long background working in media, marketing, communications, and, and tie it all together. So tis the season for trends, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, a lot of this this information I have been updating recently with my team because this is the time of year when we're really looking at what's coming in 2020. It's also a great time of year to look back and evaluate what um, what the changes were in 2019, what worked, what didn't. Um, and so a lot of that will be reflected as, as we talk today. So um, it, it's kind of funny because if Sheryl Sandberg had predicted the top marketing trends for 2020, It's beeping at me. Oh, thank you. She would have not put email marketing on the list at all. Because you may remember back in 2010, she claimed that email marketing was dead. She announced the end of email marketing. Do you guys remember this? It made sense at the time because um, with the rise of social media, of course she's CEO of Facebook, so of course this would come from her. Um, with the rise of social media, we were really seeing that teenagers, unlike their parents, were not using email. And so the thought was that when those teenagers, now Gen Z, entered the workforce, that email would, be, would go away. There was a lot of talk that we would be messaging on Facebook, we'd be using um, platforms, which many of us are using platforms like Slack and Asana and other program management tools and communication tools, but as you know, email is not dead. Um, in fact, not only did it not die, it has continued to grow. How many of you checked your email today? <laughs> How many times have you checked your email today? Right? I have five emails. Exactly, exactly. So numbers um, show that checking email is actually the number one activity that people do on the internet. Um, how many of you thought it would be social media? I thought it would be social media. Um, it's, it's close. So um, checking email, social media usage, and, um, and Google searches or you know, searching for things um, are, are the top reasons people use the internet. Um, but 94% of internet users get online just to check their email. This is really important for us because we know that we want to hit our target audience where they are. So if they are in their email inbox, we want to be on their, in their email inbox. The, the reason for this, I believe, the power of email marketing comes from the ability to really break through barriers. We're talking cultural barriers, we're talking generational barriers, barriers of class. Um, it's, it's really effective for us because we can target a very specific audience um, and a large audience through email because everyone there. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You hustle and hustle and hustle, and yet there still is never enough time in the day to get everything done. Like, what would you give to just have one more hour? Like, just one. Like, there are times on the weekend when I'm like, why can't we just pause? Like, every once in a while, just like pause the whole time space continuum and just like have a moment to rest. Like that would be awesome to have an hour. Um, so if this sounds familiar, um, chances are it means you really don't even have time to think about how to buy yourself more time, which is what some of these email marketing tools can do for us. Now it does take time to set them up. It takes time to get them going and time to set them up right. But once they're in place, you really are buying yourself more time. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, here's a quick glance at the stats. Um, there are 3.9 billion active email users compared to 3.5 billion social media users. So there are actually more email users than social media. I know I keep harping on that because I just, I was so surprised at the numbers. I really did not, I mean I knew email marketing was big of course, I, I do a lot of email marketing, but I didn't know that it was bigger than social media, so that's important. 86% um, of B2B marketers use email marketing. Why? Because their audience is there. Um, and if 86% of, of marketers are using email marketing, it must be working for them in some sense. American workers receive an average of 126 emails per day. Email traffic has gone up, sorry Cheryl, it's gone up in the last five years, about 5% 
um, the last four years, about 5% each year. So it continues to go up, usage does. Um, which means that not only do we have to use the tools available to us, but we also have to be able to cut through the noise. Because if people, if our audience is receiving an average of 126 emails per day, what's gonna make our emails stand out? And then what are we gonna do to make sure that we're, con you know, not constantly, but that we are um, making sure that we're in their inbox? Um, we also have to keep up with the changing technology because not only is MarTech evolving for us and the tools that we have available to us, but it's also evolving to keep us out of the inbox. So what are you doing to make sure that your email actually gets to your intended audience? How are you making sure that you're not just ending up, you know, all of that time and effort and money that you're putting in to, um, to creating the content that you're actually getting through to your audience? Um, Last week, I was talking to a new client, and um, she was telling me about her company's prior email marketing campaigns with another agency. So she says to me, yeah, we have this MailChimp account, but we actually, you know, we never use it. They just create an email, and they send it to me, and then I have to send it out to everyone on our list. And, you know, it's about, like, 1,500 people, so it takes me, you know, a few, you know, about a day to get it all done. And um, she said, um, but we don't use. I was like, well, why do you have a? Why why don't you use your Mailchimp account? You know, I'm trying to like keep a straight face. And she says, well, because they said that it'll just go right into the spam filter. That's interesting because I don't think Mailchimp would be one of the world's largest email software programs if it didn't work, right? Um, and so. For her, this executive director, think of all of the time that she just bought by hiring us because she does not need to send out those emails one by one, right? Like, that's why we have these programs like MailChimp. Um, so imagine when I showed her things like personalization and automation and um, for her list of all of these subscribers, um, she's not going to know what to do with all of that time except to happily take the money from her new donors and, and move on her way. So the lesson here is you need to know how it works. Don't hate the game, learn how to play it. When we talk about social media, we all grumble about the algorithms. But the problem isn't the algorithms. The problem is business owners and marketers who don't know how to use the algorithms, right? We just have to know the rules and play by the rules and finesse the rules so that we're getting through where we need to. Same thing is true for email marketing. So let's talk about the best programs um, to streamline your email marketing efforts and how to use them effectively. Because the other agency that this woman was using is half right. Um, you have to set MailChimp up correctly, otherwise the emails won't go through. They will go right to the spam folder. So it could be that they were experiencing that and then they, they for whatever reason, decided, okay, we can't use this program anymore. But if you set it up correctly, the emails will go through. So let's talk about um, when you're choosing your platforms. Um, you need to evaluate several factors. So we're going to talk through that. Um, starting with, what are your goals for the system? So each of you in here are from different organizations, or your clients are different organizations. So you have to look at what is your end goal? Why are you sending the emails in the first place? What do you want back from people? Um, and you know, Leo and I were, were chatting very briefly about automation. So, and we'll get into automation in a moment. But um, but if if you have a lot of automated emails you need to send, if every Every time something happens, then you want an email to go out, then you're going to need to pick a platform that is going to be capable of helping you achieve that goal. So first look at your goals. What messages will you communicate? What does your audience want from you? Not just what do you want to send to them, but what are they looking for from you? So streamline your goals. Um, once you've laid out your goals, consider these factors. Cost and value. Some marketing um, email tools, as Chad and I were talking about, seem affordable when you just have a few contacts. Um, as the number of contacts on your list start to grow, um, you'll see these platforms, their, their subscription levels change. HubSpot, for instance, when you jump to 10,000 contacts, that price point per month jumps drastically compared to some other platforms. However, what you get out of HubSpot also changes drastically depending on the features that you need. So HubSpot might be the perfect choice for you, but if a, a low cost um, tool is what you're looking for, then it's not gonna be HubSpot. So look at the cost and then what you get. Um, what features are included? So are there 
pre-built um, email templates that you can use that are ready to go? Are there um, you know, multiple contact lists? Or are you going to have to learn how to right away um, go through a segment, uh, and segment your audiences like MailChimp does? Um, are you able, do you have access to A-B testing? Is there automatic send time optimization? All of these tools that will help you if you need them. So just compare these, these features. Um, is the platform user friendly? You have to be able to use it. Um, and in some cases, for, for our agency, our client wants to be able to use it as well. So I have to look at, is this, is this platform going to be too robust for them? Um, or, or the opposite, are they looking for more? So it has to be easy to use. Does it have a built-in CRM? Unless you're a big company or you already have a separate CRM that you'll want to integrate with your email, um, it might make sense for you to combine your email marketing tools with, with the CRM. So that will be really helpful when you get into automation and segment in, uh, segmentation. Um, so two more factors to consider. Integrations are also really important. Does this email platform connect with your website so you can have forms on your website or landing pages? Um, does it connect with a payment system? Does it connect with webinars? So are you, um, you know, do you have people sign up online for, for webinars and then they get put right into your email system? Um, nothing is worse than having a, a, a great plan where you collect a ton of emails and then you have to go through and input them manually because the systems don't integrate. So look at the integrations. Um, deliverability. Again, we want to make sure that the emails are going to actually get through. So um, do some research. There is a site, make a note, Email Tool Tester. Um, I, this is just a site that I personally like. I think they've done a great job of providing reviews on all of the things that we've talked about so far, everything from features to price point, um, pros and cons of a number of email platforms. So that would be one. Um, so all of these platforms have their issues. There, You have to go through a tech setup when you're first setting it up to make sure your emails, you know, you need to go through auth authentication and, and um, verify your domain and, and to make sure, you know, that you've got your bases covered. Um, and then some are are glitchier than others. So, so check it out and make sure that it's going to work for you. What's the name? Can you say that again? Yes. Email tool tester. Okay. Email tool tester. And then finally, don't forget analytics and support. Um, you need to know how your campaigns are doing. Some platforms provide much more robust analytics than others. So depending, again, on how important that is to you, that'll be a factor you consider. Some free platforms, like in the, in the free subscription level, they don't provide support. So that's something else you want to look at. So if you encounter problems down the road, or if you're not very, you know, if you're not super tech savvy, that's something you're going to want to consider: is is what what support is available to you. Um, so with all of that in mind, um, these are some. These I just picked the top five that we work with. These are not all of them. Um, I'm not a coder. I'm not super techie. I've, we have people on our, on our team that do that. So these are not those platforms if you're looking for that. Um, but these would be you know, five to consider. Active Campaign, Constant Contact, HubSpot, MailChimp, and iContact. Um, and of course, there are more. So again, as you're doing your research, you'll see. And keep in mind, your needs are going to be different from my needs. And so active campaign might be perfect for you, but it may not be necessary for me. So um, just things to consider. OK, as we're talking about key features, let's look at um, current trends and then what, um, what really what we expect will happen in 2020. So some big buzzwords we've been using for a while include automation, segmentation, and personalization. Um, of course, they have to be big, hard words <laughs> when you're trying to talk. Um, so now we're going to add to that. Um, and these words have been out there as well, but we're going to focus on them for today's purposes. User-generated content, interactivity, and accessibility. All right. so. Let's go through these. Automation. How many of you are using automation campaigns? Awesome. OK. You can get up here and talk. <laughs> um, OK. So there will always be a place for one-time emails. Um, 
uh, alerts, newsletters, things that you're just sending one, you know, one and done, maybe you're just notifying of something, so that's great. But automation really helps you, um, one, save time, but also keep up with it and to be consistent about it. So automation, for those of you who aren't using it, it allows you to set up triggers. So someone sends you, and um, someone signs up for your email list, they automatically get a welcome email. Um, maybe in a certain time period, they get another email or a set of resources, and, and you can set this all up in advance so yes it takes some time on the front end but then once it's in place this just keeps going um, if you are selling products if you are um, really working at a sales funnel this is a great way to set up a drip campaign so that it's it's automated and you have consistent messaging consistent branding and you're really moving that relationship forward um, so automation is, I think we're going to see, you know, the tools continue to grow stronger for us, um, which, which will be great. Segmentation. This is when you break your email list down um, into smaller segments. And you can base those smaller segments on um, anything that you need. So specific criteria. Um, this is a great way to personalize what you're sending. Um, so for instance, maybe you have offer a variety of services, but there are people that are interested in just one service at a time. So you can break it down um, like that. You can do geographic location, interests, purchase history, um, things like that, so that you can really cater and make the person feel like they're getting an email that's intended only for them. Um, sometimes, as you know, that gets really creepy. But that's the great thing, too, is consumers actually say that they want information that is only relevant to them. So the more you can do that, the more you can personalize and, and, and really create these segments, the better off your email campaigns, the stronger they'll be. So personalization takes us a step further by really seeming to create that one-on-one -on -one experience with, with the person. So. Um, Personalization is really a broad term, but the numbers show as you kind of dive deeper into this that the more personal you get, the better the return. So how often do we complain like, gosh, I just had this phone conversation about, you know, buying a new car and suddenly all these car ads are showing up. Like, right, we, we all complain about that, but how many of us still click on those car ads? And, and how many of us, like, like that happens to me. Like, Target likes to remind me that I've left something in my cart. And I'm like, I know Target because I had, like, willpower. Like, I actually, like, was going to leave it there. And then the next thing you know, it's being shipped to my house. So those ads actually work. So personalization, as much as we complain about it, it works. Um, and this is because we start to see people as people instead of as clicks. So really focus on what those interests are. Um, okay, so user-generated content. Um, UGC is, is great because how many of you look at reviews before you buy something? Like everyone, most people are looking at reviews. So a review is an example of user-generated content. It's when you're reaching out to your audience and you're having your audience help you to create this content. So this can be text, images, audio, video, um, content that's created by your end user. So use your email campaigns to collect this content. Use it for reviews, send polls, surveys. Find ways to incentivize your clients to contribute. Um, and OK, so there is, I have a, a quote here. So 82% of consumers consider user-generated reviews extremely value, valuable. 70% of people look to reviews or ratings before making a purchasing decision. So. We also know that um, email subscribers, fun fact about email subscribers, they're three times more likely to share that email content on social media. So I don't know why. Maybe they're just more actively <laughs> using these platforms. But um, so it works. So use your email marketing in tandem with your social media, especially for user-generated content. Interactivity. So 2020 could be, the experts are saying, this is not me, could be the year that more emails are, are opened on a mobile device than a desktop or laptop. Um, it's, it's already close. So what, what we, where this really matters for email content, and this goes back to when you're picking your platforms. These email platforms are, the software programs are designed to make the emails responsive on mobile devices but it doesn't always look good. So 
we have to consider that. So when you're picking your platform, when you're designing your email, make sure that it's going to work on mobile device. If you're not looking at the mobile preview before you send, make sure and do that. Just check it out. Because um, some things get wonky. You know, buttons get big or too small and pictures do weird things. So, so check that out. And the reason being that two-thirds of mobile users will delete your email if something looks odd, if something's just off, or if it's not showing up the way it should. And if people are checking their emails on their phones or, you know, small tablets, then, you, then that really matters. Um, so where this comes into interactivity or the interaction that we're driving with our audience, this really matters because animated buttons, um, you have to make sure they're going to work on mobile devices. Um, so something to think about. But people are also looking for that. So they're also looking for um, the rollover effects where they can, um, I actually had a client go round and round with me about this a couple of weeks ago. And she, I mean, she basically wanted an email campaign to be like her whole website sent in an email. I was like, well, that's a really interesting <laughs> idea. Um, we'll get on that. Um, so people are looking for things to be interactive. They like to stay where they are and not leave the platform. So that's why social media, we're seeing a lot of buying happening right within like Facebook or right on Instagram. Because the easier we know, the easier we make it for people, the fewer clicks, the more likely they are to respond. So start to think about that when it comes to your emails. How can you drive that interaction right within the email? Where are you taking them to when they click on things? How easy is it for them to navigate where you want them to go? Accessibility. So we've, we've been talking about accessibility for a while. Um, accessibility is making sure that you have the right coding so that you can identify um, you know, images, for instance, for screen readers, so that those who are visually impaired know what the design, you know, is for. Um, especially when we're talking about, like, how many of you um, create a beautiful image with text in Photoshop and then use that in your email campaign? Things like that, sometimes, you know, there may be, re there may be reasons for that. The design may look right, but you really need to make sure you're using the, the alt text in the proper way because, um, for those who are visually impaired, for slow internet browsers, if you have a bad Wi-Fi connection, that image is just not going to appear, and then there's going to be nothing there. So again, wasted email. And wasted email always opens you up to the possibility that people could unsubscribe. So you just want to think about it. You want to make sure that your content's getting through, that you're not annoying people with things that don't work, that sort of thing. So accessibility is really important. Um, the other... The other kind of trend with accessibility is voice search um, and, and compatibility with voice. So we, we actually, so our team has a blog coming out um, as soon as I post it, I think probably tomorrow, um, on, the, on the trends for, for 2020. And, and voice is going to be so huge because, um, so roughly 250 million smart speakers will be installed worldwide by the end of this year. And that number is only expected to grow in 2020. So think of all of the things people are using voice for. They're, they're searching maps. They're searching locations. They're searching their emails. So making sure that you have the alt tags in the proper place and that your email is set up correctly within the platform you're using will really help with that. All right. Last set of things here. Um, just double checking time. Okay. Um, so as we're focusing on those tech trends, we also need to make sure that we don't lose sight of the basics. And, um, and, and the reason why I'm kind of ending on the basics is because I know most, you know, you came here today knowing the basics. But um, there's usually something that triggers. Sometimes these basics can so easily get left off. And it often happens when I'm talking with clients or even other colleagues that like something will turn and they're like, oh my gosh, okay, I haven't been doing that. So let's, let's talk about um, just kind of my five like key basics here to make sure that your marketing's more effective. Um, pay attention to the technical setup. Um, this includes information that you're putting in the header, um, which is going to control the email's transmission. So make sure you verified your domain with the provider. Make sure you followed all of the proper setup steps so that your email doesn't get blocked or it doesn't go into the spam folder or it just doesn't disappear forever. So 
oftentimes that part gets skipped because we get so excited to just get in and start putting together that first campaign that maybe you've you know you've put your email address in and you're ready to go well you're not ready to go you need to do go through the proper authentication and domain settings to make sure that you're um, set up also never use as you're setting up um, kind of that um, masked email address um, uh, Paul Deuce, is that, no, Paul at Uno Deuce, what's your email address? I was going to use you as an example and I'm totally screwing it up. <laughs> Paul S. At Paul S, okay. So use Paul S. Um, don't use info at unodeuce.com or no reply at unodeuce.com. Those are things that are going to trigger a, the, the spam filter. You're going to end up in the, in the spam folder. So, um, so that's something. Um, it seems really tempting because you'd rather any out of office replies or any messages like that to not go into your inbox. You'd rather they just go to that info folder that you can check later. Um, just set up rules and folders in your inbox because otherwise, I mean, it's just not going to work. You just can't use the other ones. Um, don't forget about the quality of your content. So um, we were kind of, kind of talking about this earlier. Like think of all of the junk email that you get. There's so much junk out there. And what do you do? You just delete it. And so that's, I think, why people think that email marketing doesn't work, because we think of all the junk that we get. We don't think. So make sure your content is on point, because it doesn't matter if you're following all of these rules, if you have the best automation set up. If you're not providing content that your audience actually wants to read and wants to interact with, it's not going to do you any good. So, so when it comes to the content, you know, focus on your subject line. 47% of people decide right from the subject line, without even the preview, right from the subject line whether they're going to open the email or not. Um, and also, make sure you're not using words that are going to trigger the spam filter. Words that are overly salesy um, are going to, um, they're just going to, they're going to flag, be flagged. So like even Gmail will, is flagging emails now. So um, Free. Yeah. Um, like in fact, a lot of platforms will actually um, kind of do an audit of your email before you hit send. Oh. So it'll tell you, like, this is too salesy or this is being flagged. And you can choose at that time whether you want to send it anyway or whether maybe you want to change, change the wording around a little bit. Yeah. Um, Make sure you're using personalization. Use things that are going to pique curiosity. Ask questions. Avoid all caps. Avoid numbers and, um, and too many special characters in the subject lines, especially. Um, and remember to use your automation to resend the email campaign to those who didn't open it the first time. You'll always pick up new opens. Keep the email subject lines under 50 characters. Even that is, is a lot. The shorter, the better. But um, that also helps mobile devices. So keep those subject lines short. Um, a lot, of, um, a lot of email platforms also have pre-header text. Use that because that will show up in the preview pane. And that's better than just pulling the first line out of your email. Because sometimes that first line is, you know, click here to open in a web browser. You know, it's like it's not what you want it to preview. So um, always use alt text. Again, like I already talked about this before. So it's really important for the visually impaired, right? But also, um, we talked about slow networks, um, security software, other issues that might prevent that image actually loading. So you want to make sure and, and use the alt text. If you're not sure what to use for alt text, look at the image and describe it. Include a specific call to action. So this is another thing, again, it's so basic. But you know what you want your audience to do. But do they know what you want them to do? Like, make it really clear to them. Are they calling you? Are they clicking for this promo on your website? Are they, like, what are they, what do you want them to do? What is that end goal? And make sure that it's prominent and it's in a place where they're going to actually do it. And it's worded in a way that they're going to understand. Does that make sense? Like, we just connect the dots for them. Um, so a call to action should be short and simple, but also specific. If you are directing readers by using a link, do not use a shortened URL. Do not use Bitly. That also gets flagged by um, spam folders, by firewalls. So do not use shortened URLs. And then 
last but not least, cross all your platforms. So for instance, make sure you include social media sharing buttons um, or buttons for them to share your email to, to you know, how many people want to forward it, use that, um, but also have the buttons for them to follow you so that you can cross market between your platforms. And that is it. So those are kind of in a nutshell, an overview of the biggest trends and you know, the things that are coming and also the basics.